What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and some more bolt action here as we continue on with our market garden review and now we're getting into the British airborne scenarios here. So this is scenario seven of the overall list here in the book. So, and as we can kind of get a little visual reference there. So this one has a pretty long title here. So first in 21st independent company hits the ground. So the scenario is suitable for any three landing drop zones. Uh, used on September 17th in terms of terrain forces um, uh, and deployment, uh, basically identical. So the primary objective here, um, uh, similar to the Americans, so um, but though different methodology. So we get a little bit of a different scenario and an interesting take here on uh, just, again, something a little different that you can use uh, maybe in some of your other scenarios or custom games. And we'll get into that. So the British start the game with five units. Four sections of 10 men and a command group of two, so officer and his um, runner. Each section has a Bren gun team, and there should be an equal ratio of rifles to SMGs. For each section, the British player will also need to field a light mortar team. These would really have been members of a uh, the, uh, the basically the 10-man section. Um, but for bolt action purposes, it's easier to regard them as teams uh, with their own order dice, no less. One of the sections must be designated as the HQ section carrying uh, the Eureka equipment. Any of the other three sections um, or the command group can lay out identification panels for the incoming aircraft. So the Germans, uh, in contrast, start the game with three five-man patrols, four rifles and an SMG, and are reinforced with the arrival of two rifle squads of nine men, including an LMG, so pretty useful there, and one SMG, which arrives um, then with either an advance or run order at any point on opposing edges on um, table, uh, sorry, um, on turn two, and then another section arriving um, in turn three, and then turn four. And then at that point, they basically can show up any edge. So as, again, more patrols close in from all um, areas. The German force can be drawn from any of the wide range of units which were deployed in local security duties throughout the arnhelm wolfhetze renkum area. At one extreme, they could be men uh, who are not fully trained or not physically fit for frontline duty. So basically, you know, like, uh, again, sort of secondary troops. Uh, and then uh, the other, they could be potentially some you know, high-level first-class soldiers. Since all the German forces in the area had some degree of responsibility for patrolling and security, there is no requirement that the patrols should all be drawn from the same type of infantry unit either. So, again, worth uh, adding some replay here to the scenario and just trying out different combinations of different types of German units just to get um, some variation in there. So that's definitely a, another idea to explore in some custom scenarios. Um, just, you know, varying... Uh, the different uh, types of troop quality available just to really force some interesting decisions for both players. So we'll come right back and take a look at now uh, the actual details of um, uh, the gameplay. All right, guys, and we're back. And so uh, as far as the board goes here, um, pretty standard to what we've seen from some of the other ones so far. It's basically a large open field with uh, sort of surrounded by... Uh, uh, forest and then some lower level hills here so as we say or as it says here so fringe woodland no more than six inches deep the field should basically just have scatter of low hills up to maybe 12 by 18 and just uh, mainly there just for line of sight blocking purposes so again you can add a little bit of variation on that but again just um, keeps it from just being a wide open board and kind of a turkey shoot so the deployment then the british units start the game scattered randomly across the lz um, and can be given any order. The German units, which are available on turn one, start the game in any uh, three corners of the table chosen by the player and must be given either advance, run, or fire. So again, just kind of keep that in mind. So British forces ideally kind of scattered in the actual drop zone area, and then German forces basically coming in from the quarters. But um, again, initially, you definitely want to be careful with the Germans uh, really being outnumbered um, and uh, potentially just getting themselves shot off the board if if the British player kind of concentrates, uh, or how depending on how the British player concentrates their their forces, so something to keep in mind there. So the objective then, the British must try to set up the Eureka and layout recognition panels. The Germans must basically prevent them from doing so. Pretty simple stuff. So the first turn here, no orders required to bring uh, the first wave of units onto the table. The British have already landed, so they have everything. 
and then the German patrols uh, basically gradually, you know, trickle in and um, just more and more start showing up from all directions. So, and then here coming to what we were talking about earlier, game duration. So this is a neat idea to test out with some other um, custom scenarios or, you know, varying other scenarios from other campaign books too. Um, so the air fleet is going to turn up 30 minutes after the arrival, regardless of the success or failure of the Pathfinder troops. So the game is only limited to four turns. And that really adds some pressure on uh, both sides, right? Because there's really, you know, you can't really afford to have any turns or actions wasted uh, or activations wasted. So really, again, you're going to have to make some very careful and crucial choices. And so if the Germans can in any way really just... Um, waste the British uh, British players' uh, time by just not getting things done. That certainly favors the defender here. So that being said, the British, uh, at least initially, um, certainly have the firepower advantage and could certainly sort of focus down some of the initial German patrols um, and still have some of their units uh, focus on uh, completing the task at hand. So again, it's interesting, you know, back and forth with that. And then victory here is achieved basically... Uh, the British platoon must have successfully deployed at least one of the panels um, and one of the uh, Eureka sets in um, in operation on the landing zone drop zone at the end of turn four to um, win the game. Anything else is basically a German victory. So pretty cut and dry. But, um, you know, again, as we talked about tactically, depending on how the British player um, really focuses on the initial German units and then allocates um, other units to basically setting up those uh, those panels and the Eureka. And depending on how the train set up too, you know, you have a little bit of line of sight blocking. So, you know, you can focus on getting some of that accomplished initially. It's just a matter of then um, keeping that uh, initial firepower advantage as more and more German patrols start showing up. And especially once the German patrols with the uh, LMG start showing up and certainly um, dropping in that firepower now. British having access to some light mortars too. So again, there's some interesting variables there. So um, again, and also depending on how you want to bring in the uh, different qualities of the German troops. So, you know, if it's really going to be uh, second line uh, sort of reservist type troops, they might not be all that effective. So in some ways this could really easily go to the British player uh, and others though, um, just depending on if they're not really focusing so much on the mission at hand and just, um, having to deal with the German forces that can certainly um, work against them against uh, with only um, four turns. And certainly, you know, the German player, ideally, if you can start putting some um, pin markers on the Brits, um, just, uh, you know, not even about, uh, it's not even necessarily about causing casualties, but really just preventing them from having those crucial activations potentially um, can really, you know, every, every failed one of those certainly will have a bigger impact in this shorter type of game. So let us know in the comments, guys, what you think of the scenario in general. Do you think this uh, is really more skewed to one or the other sides? Any variations you'd make and what your overall thoughts are on just um, missions that are purposely set up to be shorter to begin with and um, what kind of um, things we could do to play around with that. So uh, again, leave us some comments, guys. Like and subscribe. We'll have some more Bolt action for you soon here as we now start working our way through the Brit scenarios and then uh, plenty more to cover here for Market Garden. Thanks so much for checking in, guys. We'll see you in the next one.